Welcome to the Cocktail Guru Podcast. A show about food, drink, and entertainment. With a tight focus on the good life. And all things delicious, luxurious, and fun. I'm Jonathan Pogash, bartender, author, and the host of Cocktails the Grand Tour. And I'm Jeffrey Pogash, wine and spirits professional, author, insatiable collector of culinary ephemera, and so people tell me, an engaging raconteur. And my dad. <laughs> well, uh... Okay, that uh, the, the, dad is clapping off camera here. Um, for some odd reason, he just feels like clapping. Uh, but thank you. Uh, how's it going? How you doing tonight, Dad? It is nighttime. It is. This is our first nighttime podcast. I'm doing very well, thank you. But I'll be doing even better after I drink my martini. Oh yes, this is uh, the Cocktail Group Podcast After Hours. Let, let me my, hear that. My Scape Grace Martini. Let me hear that shake. Oh. That's a good sound. That's a good sound. You're, it, a, you're it, a vigorous shaker. Yes, I am. I've got lots of ice in here because I'm a. Sh- I love my martinis shaken, not stirred. Pogash, Jonathan Pogash. That's what they call me. And uh, that's very go. nice. I have a martini. I have a martini with olives, and the martini uh, is in uh, in honor of our guest, who we'll bring on in just a second. Cheers, yes. Dad. Cheers, John. But I'm not finished yet. Oh, geez. All right. I'm adding a drop of orange. Actually, it's blood orange bitters. Okay, blood that was orange definitely, bitters. That was definitely more than a drop. That was yes, like well, a, I a, I love I I love my orange bitters, and mm-hmm. I also have about it's a fifty fifty half half vermouth and half gin. Oh, very classic, uh, very nineteenth century. In honor of our guest, yes, um, well, so, not nineteenth century, nineteen fifties. Okay. Thanks for correcting. That's what you're there for. Um, so I, 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 there's only one occasion in which I would wear my my watermelon shirt. Uh, it's a very special shirt, and you're wearing another one of your tiki shirts, Dad. Uh, I am and indeed. it is it is because our guest today is one of my very good friends. Uh, we are actually friends, <laughs> um, and we were uh, struggling actors in New York City uh, when we moved there in 2001. And uh, he happens to be a TV star, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, yes, and he one one of you is no longer struggling. <laughs> oh, oh my good, oh, that hurts. Um, but uh, yes, uh, that is true, in fact. And um, he is he is an awesome guy, and he happens to be on a very um, well known and popular TV show called The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. And I know that he loves food, and I know that he loves drinks. So uh, let's bring on my good pal, Michael Zegan. Hello, Mike. Hello. This hey. is such, a, such an honor to have you here, and thank oh, you. Well, it's my pleasure. Thanks for taking the time. I know how busy you are. You must be absolutely exhausted because you're working all the time. Yeah, uh, yeah. Lately, lately, I've been working nonstop, like literally nonstop. I, yeah. I, uh, this past Monday was the first day, actual day off I've had in three and a half weeks. Yeah, you're um, in you're in rehearsals now, right? Well, I'm in rehearsals, but, but before that, I just did a a, a movie. I, I was filming an indie film. Oh wow! And um, the schedule was just rigorous. It was every day. I mean, I I was like, I was the lead, which I have never done before. You know, where mm. I'm, it's like me, yeah, in every frame of the movie, and and uh, it was exhausting, and and it, you know, but this is this is the dream. I, I'm I'm not I'm not complaining. I'm just right. It's just how it is. I'm just. Yeah, I, and then I moved straight into a play. Like, literally, we wrapped the movie, and I the next day I had rehearsal for the play. So, um, so I've just been doing that, and uh, it's eight hour days, you know, eight hour rehearsals, and uh, here I am. <laughs> wow. But so you're, what is a day? What is a day um, in the life when you're doing the movie look like? Mm-hmm. Um, is there- well, it was it was uh, so the movie all takes place over one day. So, uh, it was, you know, it was a constant battle with the sun. It was just like, I, I would wake up at five 30 and get to set wherever it was. I mean, we, we shot all over the city. Um, the, the movie is about, um, it's about this like kind of scumbag real estate broker, uh, or actually real estate agent. And that's you. That's different. That's me. Of course. And, um, over the course of the day, I kind of have to reconnect with my 10-year-old daughter 
um, who's kind of sort of estranged. And uh, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. It's, it's very, it's very like Paper Moon esque, if you've ever seen that movie. Oh, yeah. It was really good. It's, it, it, I think it's going to be really cool. Um, but, it, and it's called Zoo. But uh, yeah, it was, it was hard. It was, I've, it, I've never, you know, I, like I said, I've never been like the lead, the guy in a movie before, which has always been a dream of mine. And, and, uh, and I think it could turn out really great. So it was just a lot of work. It was, so it was, you know, wake up five thirty, get to set wherever it was. Cause it shot all over New York. I mean, it was like Upper West Side, Upper East Side, Lower East Side, Rose, Roosevelt Island, wow. uh, you know, Brooklyn, Queens, it was everywhere. And, and it was cool because, uh, it's the kind of movie where, it's sort of a love letter to New York. And, and so, you know, in 20 years, you could watch it and look back and see what things look like. And, uh, I, you know, sort of like, a, I mean, I'm not comparing it to something like Dog Day Afternoon or something like that. But it was in that style where it's, you know, it's a new or Midnight Cowboy, you know, it's a, it's a, a movie about New York. And um, New York's definitely a character, you know. Uh, but uh, yeah, I think it could be really cool. Wow. Congratulations on that. Thank you. And you never know. It could be just as big as Midnight Cowboy someday. I we mean, hope. Finger, I, you know, fingers knock crossed. On wood. I, I don't know. I don't know yeah. about that. But, F- fingers but, crossed. Uh, um, that would be amazing, obviously. But um, let's, uh, you know, before we talk more about the show and, well, the two shows, the TV show and the stage show that you're currently mm-hmm. in rehearsals for, let's take it back. A little bit. Yes. Um, yes. Let's go back. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, you grew up in uh, Ridgewood, New Jersey. That's right. And I grew up in West Orange, New Jersey, mm-hmm. uh, which is about I don't know twenty something minutes away from each other. Uh, yeah. We didn't know each other then, but uh, what was what was your deal in uh, in Ridgewood? What, <laughs> what did you? I assume you. I, I know that you did. Um, you know, you did school theater and community yes. theater, like I did, and all of that stuff. Yeah, I, I, I grew up doing theater. Um, my my parents put me into these uh, Saturday classes when I was a kid, which, you know, I, I, I mean, I wanted to I wanted to be a professional actor since the time I was, you know, five years old. So uh, my parents said no. And uh, they but, you know, they did they did support me and, and they did put me into these these uh, Saturday classes, which I love. Maybe my maybe my parents should have said no. Uh, and maybe that would have been the difference because they right. said, because they said yes. And, really? uh, yeah, they were like, yeah, do it. Of course. We said, I did. Sh- we said, sure. Yeah. Go ahead. And you got an agent and everything. Oh yeah. no, 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 no. I'm, I well, mean, eventually, no. eventually, dude. eventually. No, I, I had, <laughs> I had, I had a manager called Shirley Grant and. Oh, you know, I was with Shirley Grant too. Yes, I know. I know. We were. Both oh, 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 you mean Grant. later on? Later on. Yeah. No. When I was a kid. Yeah. No, no, a child. Oh, you mean like a child actor? I, I did not have aspirations no, to be a child no. actor. But when you, Mike, when you say you wanted to be an actor, you literally wanted to be like a child actor. Like, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. I wanted to. I wanted to. Um, there was a kid in my like first grade class who was in, you know, every commercial on the planet, and yeah. so uh, I wanted. He was. I mean, I was. I was so jealous. Like he was in every toy commercial, every you know, He Man commercial, every cereal commercial, and I was yeah. just like, I want that. And my, my parents, I think, you know, they, they watched a lot of TV and they saw what happened to these child stars and they did not want that for me for, for whatever reason. Um, no, it's understandable, but I, I, you know, so, so they didn't, they, no, they, and also it's, it's, it was a lot like, you know, in this movie that I just did, I worked with, a an, it was an 11 year old girl and she was kind of just starting in the business and she was, she was great. Um, but it was a lot of work and, and, you know, she missed a month of school and, and her, her mom was new to this too. And, and her mom constantly had to drive her to auditions. And, um, although now, you know, it's with, with, with zoom and everything, it's a lot easier, but it, it's still, um, you know, this was pre pandemic. Like she drove her to auditions now, since then it was, it's, you know, you could do it at home, but even then she's got all this homework and, and she has to learn lines for an audition and do this voiceover and do this commercial audition. And, you know, it's just a lot. She was, this little girl was completely overwhelmed. Oh, geez. Um, cool. And, uh, but she loved it. You know, she did love it. So I, I just, and she, she did, she did say that, you know, she wants to continue with it. Um, but she needed a break. <laughs> That's funny. She was like, I just need a break. 
Um, I just need, I just need a, a massage. I need to go to my acupuncturist. Yeah, right. You know, I need to go to the spa and, you know, yeah. But my, my, you know, at the time, um, it was, it, 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 my, my parents didn't want to have to drive into the city every day and, right. and take me to auditions. And, um, I think that's what the, the mother of this other kid in my first year, uh, first grade class said was that it's a lot of going into the city. You never know when you have to do it. It's, it's like, you know, you're on call like a doctor. It's like, you know, they'll call and be like, Hey, you need to get to the city in an hour and, and go to this audition and whatever. And, you know, they just didn't want to do it. And, and I think maybe they thought it, it was something that I would just kind of forget about and, you know, find something else I was interested in, but it, that just wasn't the case. Well, but they you know, did, uh, they, you know, my Mike Pitt story, right? <laughs> Mike Pitt. Yeah. So he was, he was from our town and, right. and, you know, uh, he, he was a kind of a child actor. So all through high school, you know, I would be driving around town and I would see, um, I would see him on the side of the street. And I'm, and I, one time I think I pulled over, I was like, Mike, are you okay? What are you doing on the side of the street? He was like, I'm waiting for the bus to go into the city to, you know, do whatever I'm doing, do whatever I'm doing. And yeah. this, this kid, he'd, he'd be by himself, taking the bus into the city, auditioning, doing whatever. Um, great actor. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah. Well, I worked with him. Yeah, yeah, you um, did, right. No, yeah, I, I mean, you know, I, w- I was younger than, than he was at the time. Um, because I think you said he he was going in, you know, as a teenager, like sixteen, whatever. Yeah. Um, but I, I, you know, I, I had a great high school theater department too. Uh, it was called New Players, and it, you know, I went to a public high school. I went to Ridgewood High School, and they just happened to have this insanely good uh, high school theater department where we would do six shows a year and three during the summer, and you know the the teachers were amazing and they loved theater and they loved us and um, they still keep in touch with me. You know, they come to see all my shows. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, we just had a, I, I was just supported in every way. And, and, uh, and I just, I, I couldn't think of any of doing anything else. And that's, and then I went to Skidmore and, and met, met you, John. And, and everything, uh, everything changed. <laughs> everything changed. <laughs> everything. Um, we had, no, we had a lot of, we, we had yeah. a great, Great college experience. Um, yeah, totally. It was great. Skidmore, um, you know, Skidmore is a great little liberal arts college in Saratoga Springs, New York. Um, mm-hmm. And with, with also a great theater department. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Very good theater department. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and we, we went to England. We went, we studied abroad in London with the British American Drama Academy. That's right. Um, this other kid in my play actually did, did uh, Bada as well. Um, he, not, not our class, obviously, but, um, he uh, he went to Juilliard, but he he went he did Bada I think his junior year. Yeah, London London's great, and um, I, I mean you know uh, I have fond memories of our London experience, going mm-hmm. basically going to see shows almost every night. Yeah, and traveling, but yeah, I, I mean going going to yeah see all these shows. Uh, I mean that was part of kind of part of the requirements were you know was that we had to go see shows and we had to write about the shows and, um, and it was Shakespeare intensive, which was really cool. I remember you read all the, the plays. I didn't. <laughs> I just like, I don't even t- remember. No, you definitely read all the plays, but, um, th- like one of the only ones I read while I was there was Macbeth when we were, uh, riding the train to, to Edinburgh, which was cool. Edinburgh. Edinburgh. We had oh oh yeah, traveling was a lot of fun too. What were um what were some fond uh, food and drink memories from from when we were in London? You remember? Well, we were big fans of the pubs. I remember that. Oh we yes, loved, we loved going to the pubs. Um, they had great food. They you did. know you always heard horror stories about the food in London. It just wasn't true. Mm-hmm. We you know everything was great, delicious um, fish and chips. Yep, yeah. F- food is very good in London. Very yeah, good. you know fish and chips wrapped in newspaper. Um, mm-hmm. getting it late at night after. Well, so I don't know if this is the case anymore, but it was very uh, cut and dry as far as, okay, the pubs are open until 10. And then if you wanted to stay out any later, you would go to the club. Clubs, yeah. clubs right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. But then taxis, I think, ended at a certain time too. So it was hard to get home. That's right. I remember walking lo- very long walks. Yes. And very late. <laughs> very late, like three in the morning, walking an hour. <laughs> yeah. And then going to classes the next day. That's right. Uh, now, wait a second. You skipped something. Didn't you have a few pints of beer along the way? Too? 
Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of yeah, course. Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. Right. And, it was che- and it was cheap, you know? Like, and by the way, that was it, just beer. I never, I never drank anything else. Hmm. I mean, I, I do there. remember, I think I brought this up before. I remember a bar called the, it was literally called the Long Island Ice Tea Bar. Um, oh, you're right. You're right. I do remember, remember that. that? And, yeah. and that's all, that was they, what they specialized in. And it was in giant pint glasses. Yeah. Um, and it was super cheap. It was like five quid or something for. A I don't think thing. that's what it was called though, but it, that's. Oh, is that know, what we what called it? it? <laughs> I mean, yes. I, I don't think that's what it was called. Cause I, I do remember that bar, but um, I, yeah, I don't remember what the name was, but it wasn't called like the Long Island. Okay. Iced we would bar, just make a, like a special too. But you drank Long Island iced teas. I actually still don't think I was really into it. I, I don't think I, I've ever been a big fan of Long Island iced teas. But, no, uh, no, I, I was not yeah, a fan I drank of it. Stella. Remember, we drank Stella all the time. Yeah, we mm-hmm. drank Stella. We did drink cider. I remember drinking some ciders. Cider, that's true too. Yes, yes. Um, oh. Yeah, Stella and ciders. Uh, and then, so fast forward, um, after college, what happens? Uh, we both moved to Harlem. Yes. And then nine eleven. Okay, so, so we were we were roommates in uh, in London. Um, yes. When we started by, and then we moved to Harlem, and we were roommates. Uh, mm-hmm. And I moved there a week before, two weeks before nine eleven. <laughs> yeah. And that, and that happened, yeah. which was insane. Uh yeah. Um, but yeah, and then you know, even though that that was a thing, uh, we still pursued acting and uh although like the, you know everything kind of shut down for a while but uh we still pursued it and you were working at the russian tea room i remember that's right and i was working at my dad's law firm that's and, right uh, i remember yeah. that i remember going to your if you guys uh, those of you at home please imagine this imagine a michael zegan at uh you know 22 23 years old sitting in an office desk in a law firm in manhattan is that where it was in manhattan right yeah, it was it was yeah. near Grand Central. It was on as, Lexington. As like a what were you a an assistant or or something? Yeah, it was a, a, a what's it called a, a paralegal a or par- whatever. You know, yes. like I mean, I was a reception. I you know I answered phones. I I filed stuff. It was hell. I hated it. <laughs> My dad said I was the worst employee he ever had. Oh, yeah. well, you know, um, I, mean, I just I just wasn't into it. You know, it just wasn't what I wanted to do, and it was yeah. But he would let me leave to audition, um, so I got to give him props for that. Uh, you know, I had to make up the time, but he, you know, not a lot of bosses would let their employees go out and for an hour to, you know, go to an audition. So I was lucky in that respect. Well, but, my my dad, but, my dad is my employee, and I, I let him go out every once in a while. That's right. He, he lets me out. I let you out. Huh? But 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 your all of that auditioning paid off. It paid off yeah. in two thousand and four, correct? When you when you were <laughs> this, when is a, this is my dad. This is my dad mastering Wikipedia. Is is really no, what it is? No, it's not Wikipedia. This <laughs> is I researched Michael Zegan. And well, two, I mean, I was doing the Letterman you, show. I think before two thousand four. I think it, it was right. Like my dad's thinking yeah. of um, no. I'm thinking Rescue Me. Rescue me, oh, right? rescue! Me, yeah, rescue yeah. Me. but I was doing I did I, I was doing the Letterman show. Um, I played a character on the David Letterman show called Dwight the Troubled Teen. Right, and right. I think that was like two thousand two, two thousand three, something like mm-hmm. that. Gee, I remember um, I, I remember vividly because we were living together. I remember you yeah. know you would you wouldn't know that you were doing that segment right. until like the, the day of the day of. And yes, so every, was, so every day you're like waiting, you're hanging on, uh, you're hanging. I know on it was. It. Yeah, it was like I couldn't go anywhere. I remember one time uh, I booked a, a trip to go see our, our friend John Cockroft in, in um, Chicago, and they called that day, and they were like, we need uh, you here. And I had to decide, oh, man, like, I'm, I'm glad I I did end up doing the, sh- the show that day because it was, uh, I think it, that was a show where um, some casting director saw or some producer saw me, and then they wanted me, they, they sent me like an audition, you know, so it was very exciting. It was it was yeah. for a pilot. Um, I didn't get it, but you know, at the time it was like, oh wow, like this can happen. Like it was like the head of casting for Fox saw that episode and and was like, get that kid in there, you know. So right, it was and exciting. It was, and, and it was a pilot for two girls, a guy, and a yeah, pizza place. Pizza yes. place? Okay. No, uh, I don't remember. It, it didn't get picked up, but oh. um, 
but uh but yeah i mean you know so it was i was like again i was like on call like a doctor was but um <laughs> Well, for those of you who well, haven't, it. for those of you who haven't seen uh, this, you could obviously Google. I assume you could find it on. No, Google. no, it's not. Oh, no, it's not there's around. nothing available. I don't know why, but there's literally nothing. I have uh, our another mutual friend, Adam Dubowski. His uh, his father, his father, um, taped a few episodes and sent me uh, some of the clips. I mean, my parents have like a VHS tape with all you know every single one on it, but. Um, which we sh- should get, you know, uploaded to YouTube somehow. But um, right, and this was so. This was one of the regular Letterman segments where you know Letterman would just kind of pass it on, and he'd say, "Well, what's you know, what does Dwight, what does Dwight have to say today?" You know, and you and you. It was be- basic, yeah. Oh, actually, you know what's sad is uh, the guy who I used to do the the sketches with, um, Alan Coulter, who was the the announcer on the show. He just passed away mm-hmm. like last yes. week. Oh, yes. no kidding! I saw yeah. that. He was a super nice guy. He was so nice and uh, very welcoming and, and, you know, very like he made me feel very at ease and comfortable. It was a nerve wracking experience. It was, you know, it was live. There were cue cards. And um, um, yeah. but I did I did the show uh, almost 50 times. Wow. Uh, some of the episodes wow. were cut, you know, for time. But um, but I was there, you know, and and it was it was really cool. It was a very cool experience. I got to meet a lot of celebrities. Yeah. Um, hmm. It was yeah, it was great. It was it really some was. Them, and also, it allowed me to quit my dad's law firm. Yeah, yeah, right. And some of the some of them were pretty were pretty funny. Um, yeah, a few and of them and it was you know it was it was what it was cheeky. It was like along it was along the lines of you know, uh, I, I missed I missed the bus, and when I got my lunch, it it had an apple in it. Or I don't. Well, know. so it was it was uh, me and the announcer Alan, and I played Dwight the Trouble Teen, and he would say something like he he played like my stepfather, I think. And he would say, it would cut to us, you know, David Letterman sometimes would be like, and now Dwight, the troubled teen. And, and it would cut to us. And, uh, Alan would say like, Hey Dwight, you didn't clean your room. And I'd say, you know, screw you. I hate you. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> and that's I, right. My, and you'd storm my off. catch. My catchphrase was, I hate you. I hate all of you. And, <laughs> and I storm off. That's right. And then it got like, it, sometimes it would get really weird. Like I come back on and tell kids not to, uh, not to pirate music or something, you know, like it was. <laughs> <laughs> it got weird, uh, but again, I got paid, so yeah. I, so you're not I, complaining. I was it. And then, so yeah. you did, and you did a bunch of voiceovers. Um, yeah. And and I did a national network commercial, which um, obviously everybody remembers uh, yeah. because it was a major thing. Uh, you know, <laughs> they played it all the time. They played it all the time. They really did play it all the time. And I get recognized on the street, um, you know, because they're mm-hmm. like, "Oh, you're that guy from that thing." Um, people were just breaking down the doors yeah exactly i got <laughs> yeah. you know i didn't even have to you also did the beach week don't forget that one i do want to forget that one I, yeah, which uh, they redubbed your voice for some right. strange reason it was really weird i remember i remember when i went in to do that and you know the guy we, it was an office setting and i was playing just like a, a dejected office person and i was trying to jazz up my cubicle with these um palm tree you know the these like tropical things because it was for beach week for the travel channel and and then i'm supposed to say well oh no oh i actually there's a guy who's doing that and then i walk up to that guy you walk by i walk by and and then i look at him and i'm like beach week (laughs) or but yeah but but there there was a commercial where they used your voice and then the next time we saw it they dubbed it and Mm. it and Still, nobody has any clue why they dubbed it or, you know. Well, the director was really getting, the director was getting frustrated with me while we were doing it because he, oh, is that right? well, a few times, you know, I did it and I said, that was my, my two words, beach week. And then he's yes. like, no, 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 no. Say it like this, beach week. <laughs> and I was like, okay, beach week. No, no, say it. <laughs> Beach week, <laughs> and I, and we did it like three or four times, and so, and then you were blacklisted after. And then that. I was blacklisted after that because I could not. <laughs> well, wait say a second. Lines. Okay, we've what? got a lot to talk about, though. Okay, I know we can. I know we got a skip. To, I've I've got a whole list of things oh, here. Oh yeah, gosh, okay. well, Dad had Dad Red- has the list of questions. No, it's not questions. Rescue me, yes, two thousand four with Dennis Leary. Yes, great show. Great show. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, wa- I watched you, that. You want to talk about that? <laughs> yeah. How how was it? How was working it was with awesome. Dennis? It was, it was I mean, that was my first real, you know, TV job. And, right. and I learned so much. And Dennis was wonderful to work with. He was, you know, 
what who he is. He's an asshole. And and but uh, no, I mean, wow. like he, oh, you know, you made, he, my dad was <laughs> like, you know, uh, he he doesn't he doesn't cuss. Although uh, we had an episode that we recently recorded, and he he said the f word. What? <laughs> well, yeah. it, it, it was it was in the script. I had no choice. Uh, no, no, Dennis. You know, Dennis wrote this song called "I'm an Asshole," and and yeah, he, he he is an I mean, he that's who he is. But he's a great guy. I mean, he he you know he he really took a liking to me and and uh, wrote me into more episodes. And I'm really thankful because I learned so much from working on that show. And I learned about you know all the stuff that firefighters go through because mm. uh, it is not an easy job. I mean, the, the, the equipment that they have to wear is insane. It's, it's, I, I don't know how they do it. It's so heavy. You know, the oxygen tanks are so heavy and all the, the, the equipment and, yeah. um, it's, well, towards, it's, it's, it's towards the end of that show. Say, you, it's you really, really remarkable. Fire. You were, a, you yes, became towards a firefighter. The end of the, yes. Right? I became a firefighter and then had a table saw dropped on my head. And, um, wow. And I, let's talk about, dead. let's talk about all of the ways that, um, Michael Zegan died in, in various things. So oh, well, there's no. that, and there's then that. There's and then walking dead, walking dead. Uh, you were, I got, oh. a, I, I got a hat. Oh, I, John Bernthal, another person we went to college with, yep. he snapped my neck. He snapped your and, neck, but, uh, but you were found, um, you were found, uh, skewered, zombified, skewered. What? Oh, oh yes. My, I, my leg was impaled. Your leg, oh, originally, no. when you were first oh, found, no. <laughs> yes. your leg was impaled on a, on a fence, on a picket fence of some sort. Yes, right? and then they, they, they saved me they from saved the zombies you, right? and then uh, tied me up and threw me into a shed. And then Norman Reedus uh, beat the shit out of me. Right. And uh, in real life as well. <laughs> Did he really? his method. Oh, jeez. Uh, yeah, and I'm like tied up. It was, yeah. It was and, and, then, and then you got infected and... Well oh, then, no. then I got then I got killed, and oh, right. um, by by Bernthal, and then uh, I was the first, I was the first character to not have been bitten, uh, but turned into a zombie. So that's how they they discovered that everybody's born with the virus in them. Hmm. So once you die, you become a, a you don't need to be bitten. Just you know, oh, once wow. you die, you become, but I was the first. So that's a trivia question. Yeah, I don't know if I realized that. I must have realized that yeah. at the time, but. That's cool, and and then and then you um and then I got a hatchet to the uh, skull, a hatchet to the skull. Oh, yeah, Amazing. Those were the only down. two, t- the only two times that you died in in anything that you did, right? Um, I think so. Yeah, I don't. I don't. Yeah, yeah. I haven't died too well, often. You got um, you you were you were um in Sopranos. You were beating someone up. Yeah, I went to like AJ's birthday party or whatever. It okay. was it was great. I mean, that's how I got my SAG card, but um. Right. Yeah, I mean, Sopranos was a dream. I it was my favorite show, and uh, being on it was so surreal. You know, and what, doing a what, scene with AJ. What year was that, Mike? I don't know. They all kind of go together, you know. Yeah. It's like I what 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 he's what basic dad's saying is that this is not in his notes, so he's he's like no, I I he's, met, he's I, a little I, frazzled. I, this was, this I, was before I, Rescue Me, so it must have been like two thousand. Oh, it was before Rescue Me. Okay, good, yes. good, okay. Yeah, then I'm, and, I'm sorry I missed that. And then, Dad, oh, well, what else? What else do you have in your notes? What's well, I, I, his career? I, I then jump to off Broadway in mm-hmm. two thousand. Okay. It's a big jump to two thousand and fourteen. Um, was when, that bad Jews? Bad Jews. Yes, where, where was... you you played Liam? Yes, yes, I played Liam. Uh, and yeah, I think jo- Jonathan saw that performance. Yeah, uh huh. I did. Yeah. Um, great play. Uh, it was for Roundabout Theater Company, who I'm working for now. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, love love that play. Um, the writer Josh Harmon went on to do great stuff, and uh, it yeah, it really opened a lot of doors for me in terms of of theater, which was really you know like, uh, you know, as John knows, like that's that's what we wanted to do. We we you know we yeah, wanted it's our first love. Yeah, so. Um, so yeah. And you know, that led to, I did uh, Broadway in, in 2015. I a, did, uh, a view a, from the bridge, a view from the bridge, which was, a, uh, just an absolutely wonderful experience of an insanely good play, you know, Arthur Miller, but it was mm-hmm. kind of a new take on it. This, uh, kind of experimental, uh, Belgian director, Ivo van Hova, oh. um, sort of, I, I don't know. He took this play, you know, that's been, 
widely produced and, and kind of made something different out of it. And it worked. And, uh, it was, it was a fair set. It was kind of just like a, almost a boxing ring kind of thing. And we were barefoot and it rained blood at the end. And it ooh, was just, ooh. I think I'm, I don't think I saw that one. You saw it. You came oh, to I, see it. Oh, I did. I'm sorry. Uh-huh. I saw and it. Then, and then ooh. let me, ooh, yeah, let, you were there. Whoops. Let me go through the other. I think you were. No, no. I, yeah, I was. Go, pl- Dad, please go through the other yeah. accolades. No, there are a couple that, yes. He's a walking. Oh, also, we, we won the Tony Award. So, you won oh, the Tony congratu- that's Oh, that's, yeah. yes. Fantastic. Congratulations. Let, 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 let's, let's go to the walking playbill, but, Dad. But then in, in 2020, you did a, a, how do you say, an adaptation or a remake of some a film that I really liked, Bob and Carol and Ted and Alice. Oh, oh, yes. Yeah. yeah um, 1969 yes. film. Yeah, it was a, a musical version of Bob and Carol and Ted and Alice, which is a great movie. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. Mm-hmm. Um, I played the Elliot Gould character, Ted. Mm-hmm. And it was a it was a musical version. Now I hadn't done a musical since high school, and I just felt like you know what I've always wanted. I've always kind of wanted to do a musical. I, you know, I I I'm not a musical theater actor. Like I don't sing. Like you know, I can't I can't do Phantom Mike, of the Opera or something like that. Mike, yeah, you've got you've got lungs. Oh well, thank you. I could I could sing. You know, I play guitar. I dabble in guitar. Oh. Um, so I could sing while I played that, but you know, I'm not a, a cla- I'm not a musically trained actor. Um, but uh, but this was Duncan Sheik wrote the music, and he had done Spring Awakening, which I saw four times. Uh, Did we go so, see it together? I, I saw no, it. no, okay, no. Um, b- but it was uh, so I just kind of jumped at the opportunity, and and it was a great experience. We actually got shut down by COVID. Um, but we only had a week, about a week and a half to go. So it, it, it oh, I was yeah. done. I was, I was ready to move yeah, on. Like ready. it was, yeah. you know, it was like three months of, you know, of this musical. And I was just, I was just ready. <laughs> and so, so, but before that, but before that you, you uh, did some episodes of Boardwalk Empire. Oh yeah. I did Boardwalk Empire. Of course. Um, of course. I played Bugsy Siegel. Yeah. Yep. The, the and, very uh, well-known uh, Jewish mafia gangster. Yes. Who, who basically invented uh, Las Vegas. Vegas, right? Yeah. Um, he, you know, he had a vision of of a casino in the middle of the desert and uh, this resort, and uh, so it was basically his idea. Um, but yeah, uh, no, that was a great experience. And then, and then, uh, you know, then Maisel. Then then Maisel, but Maisel. you know what? You know what got you Maisel? What's that? Um, your sketch comedy shows, um, <laughs> like Hotties Galore. Hotties Galore. Hotties Galore. I think there was Amy a, Sherman Palladino saw Amy that, Sherman but, uh, Palladino came and saw us in Hotties Galore in two thousand and two uh-huh. at the uh, Red. What was it called? The it's Red the Crane, the Theater. Crane Theater uh, in, in the Village. And she yeah. came up to us afterwards. She knocked on our dressing room door. She was <laughs> like, uh, we had we had dressing rooms. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, I, I mean that was. Uh, that that was a, a a part that you know I wanted bad. I I, I when I Hotties, read that Hotties script, Galore. <laughs> oh oh, we're on to uh oh okay yeah Maisel Joel Maisel. So you read the, mar- the marvelous so, Mrs. Maisel. Yeah. So was it um was it your agent who passed along this script? Did they spent it? Were they like um get me get me Mike Deegan? <laughs> well, I I had actually uh. A, a friend of mine was auditioning for Midge, and so she wanted me to read with her and, and help mm. her out. And, and so she came over, and I'm, I'm reading this with her. And it, it was the scene in the pilot where uh, Joel leaves Midge. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. And and I was like, wait, what is this? Like, I could do this. Mm. And so I I contacted my agents. Um, they said they were on it. I don't know. Oh uh, well, Maybe they were. That's what know? they. That's what they say. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they were because they did end up getting me an audition. So. It all worked out. Oh, that's very um, interesting. So you were just a reading partner. Well, I was just, I, I didn't, you know, at the time they were just looking for Midge. Right. Um, but, uh, but you know, after they found Rachel, uh, they moved on to Joel. And and uh, I think, actually, I think Tony Shalhoub was the first one cast. Wow. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it was a part that, you know, I auditioned three times for it. And I wanted it bad. Like, that's that was... I don't think I've ever wanted anything so badly in all my life. It was, it was, 
it was just I just felt like it was meant to be, and it was so. Tony, um, Tony Shalhoub is one of my all time favorites. Oh God, yes. ever so I, I was a great fan of Wings. Yeah. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. yeah right. I watched you, it all the time. You were the one. You were the one. The one. I was the one. <laughs> the one fan. No, no, I'm it, sure that, no. There was quite there a were following. Millions. No, of course, of course. That show no. like lasted. Yeah, it lasted years. a long time. Yeah. I loved yeah, it. No, I he, watched it. I loved it. Yeah. No, Tony. Tony is is such a talented actor. I mean, he's like, and he's so funny. He's so funny. Like, mm. he can take. You know, he, when we do these table reads when we um when we get a new script for when we get a new episode, we, we, we all come and, and it, I mean, it used to be huge. It used to be a huge deal for every episode. They would like, it would, it would be like a bar mitzvah. I mean, they'd have like, <laughs> you know, they'd have carving stations. They, they, they'd, uh, you know, uh, dress up the room to make it, uh, in the theme of whatever the episode's kind wow. of about. Wow. A DJ, so, a DJ and, and yeah, some, no someone DJ, who, no someone who like the dancer, <laughs> No. No. <laughs> they'd have dancers who pull you out of your chair, you out of your like, chair. <laughs> yeah no uh no it was it was i mean it really they went all out like this was pre-covid um and uh and you know so we'd all sit around and we'd read these episodes and like the people from amazon would be listening in or they'd be on on some sort of you know webcam like pre-zoom and um and tony just has this this ability to like read when we're reading the script he could take a line that that is a nothing line you know like a throwaway line and he'll make it hilarious and it's not it's like a way you never read it before he's just he's just got that that talent he's i mean he went to yale drama school he's a real actor yeah he's, um, he's the real deal he's got the it factor he's got an emmy he's got a tony tony's wow. got a tony tony's yeah, got a tony. so your whole show has uh golden globes and emmys yeah it's it's a it's Yes, and I can't wait for this new season to come out. Like, it's, so tell us everything. It's about season yeah. season four. This is season four mm-hmm. coming out. So, so yeah. tell us every single part of Joel Maisel and exactly what happens from start to finish. Go. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, he goes through some stuff. Uh, okay, no, but it's a really it's a cool character because. You know, I think a lot of people thought he was the villain at first, but he's not the villain. And there, there's a lot of love between the two of them, between mm-hmm. him and Midge. And um, and he, it's just, I, I get to play every range of emotion. And yeah. it's, it's it's a dream role. It really is. And, and I get to live in, you know, the 1950s. Now it's the 60s. And, 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 you know, this is Amazon. So they clearly have money. And they do. So they, they go all out. <laughs> What's that? They do? Yes, yes. Surprisingly, yes. Jeff Bezos has what? some money. He's got yep, some money. Yes. He's saved up, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, so, you know, they, they go all out. And so we have these sets that are incredible. We have these, you yeah. know, I mean, the, even just like the cars that they bring in, it's always, that's always my favorite part, just seeing what cars they have when we do like an exterior shot. Mm. Um, oh, yeah. Actually, we were, so um, I told you this, we were in, my, I was in the city with my wife and kids. Um mm-hmm. I guess it was like June and we were staying across the street from Carnegie Hall. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And sure. we walked and and we walked by Carnegie Hall and there was full lot like 50 people dressed in 1960s clothes. Winter, there was right. snow. They yes. were making snow. <laughs> it was, was a snowstorm. Yeah, I was like, "What the f is this?" Yeah. And so yeah. I texted you. I was like, "Are you oh, I, I was like, "What show is this?" And of course, me being in in the know, in the biz, I could see, I look at the piece of paper that's tacked right. up on the, mm-hmm. on the telephone pole. And I'm like, and it says the marvelous. Or no, something it or said M V uh, M M M. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. It said M M M. And, and my wife was like, Hmm, I wonder what that is. And I was like, marvelous. Mrs. Maisel. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I remember that. I was there that day. I, I, I went to visit, um, cause they were filming at Carnegie hall and, uh, I just wanted to see, you know, sometimes I just love to go and see, see what they're filming um because it's it's you know everything's just so beautiful and you know i i just i i love it i love like that's my favorite part for me really is is seeing what everybody else is doing you know when when the when the shows come out i get to see everybody else's scenes um because i kind of know what happens in mine you know and and a lot of times we do um adr which is like additional recording stuff where whether i have to change a line or 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 something like that and so then i get to see my scenes 
But um, but part of the thrill of, of watching this show for me is seeing what everybody else is up to and um, see how, they, how their scenes turned out. You know, the show is, in my opinion, filmed like a movie. It is. It's, it's a movie. Very the, ci- the cinematography is incredible. M. David yes. Mullen is yes, the director Mullen, of photography. Yeah. And uh-huh, he, yeah. he I, I watched interviews with him. Oh, and, yeah, yeah. He where he talk explained about, everything. You yes. Know? I yeah. mean, he could talk about that for days. He, yeah. he, you know, I've like had lunch with him sometimes, you know, on set. And, and he's like, well, this scene, you know, the color scheme I used in this is yeah. the same as the color yeah. scheme in this movie. Exactly. And I'm like, oh, I had, I just thought you thought that looked nice. I had no idea. <laughs> it was like hearkening back to this, you know. Wow. Um, no, he's so smart. And, and everything is so beautiful and lush and yeah. gorgeous. And he and he uses Panavision Primo lenses. Okay. Hey. Wow. I, I didn't even know that. We, we got a we got a regular regular James Cameron over here. Um, <laughs> but more more importantly, ladies and gentlemen, and a lot of people probably don't know this, is that you have a pretty special um, uncredited consultant uh, for your bar scenes. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Well. This season, I had to make a drink during a scene, which was very hard. Doing a scene and making a drink at the same time, you know, and, and having to do it the same way. Make, you know, I, I'm not a bartender. So I I uh, texted you and I was like, how do I make a martini? <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and did it yeah, help? Yeah, you gave me some. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and uh yeah, it was just, it was, it was tough because I had to remember I did this on this line, you know, because, you know, when you, when you shoot a TV show or a movie, you have to do the scene over and over and over again from different angles. So you have to make sure, you know, for continuity, you, you do it, you hold this the same way, you hold this with the same hand and you do this on this line. And, and when, so it was tough. When it, you it add in, when you add in food and drinks too, it, it's like a completely different thing because the drink, you know, has to be facing the same way. And then the, yes. you know, every, uh-huh. like the condensation on the shaker has to be, you know, the same the whole time, probably. Well, I don't know if we really oh. pay more attention to that. Well, but, if I, if yeah. I were, if I were a credited consultant, I would pay, <laughs> I would pay attention to that. Yes. Well, you know, and it's funny because with food, I try to eat as little as possible because in general, I know. Yeah, because I know that like you're going to be filming the scene for a long time and you're going to be eating a lot, mm. uh, you know, especially if you are eating in the scene. So I try to like I, I have little tricks like I'll put salt, you know, or I'll, I'll like have my fork and knife cutting up stuff, you know, just mm. I try to get as little of the food in my mouth as possible. Oh, I see what you're saying. Right. Oh, that's interesting. No, I never. I don't yeah. think I ever really thought about. Yeah, that. You've, there are a lot of food scenes in the show. Yeah, tons. There's tons of food scenes and a lot yeah. of different things. And anytime I see, you know, somebody eat. Anytime I watch something and see somebody eating, I I think to myself like they had to eat that bite all day long. Like commercials for fast food, you know, where they're eating the the nuggets and the. Yeah, I mean, of course, you know, they have spit buckets, but uh, um, that doesn't sound. Yeah, good to it's me. not pleasant. But I want you to know tonight I had gefilte fish in your oh, honor, yeah. in your honor. Uh, wh- uh, like, <laughs> why is that in my I'm honor? thinking. What I'm is, thinking of Joel. Oh what is it about Joel. me that makes you think Joel? Joel Mazel. So, of course, when you think of Joel Mazel, you obviously fish. think of gefilte fish. I think of gefilte fish. fish, of course. Okay. Well, and do you have any horseradish? Uh, tons of horseradish. Oh, okay. Tons. He, he puts yeah. mounds of horseradish on his gefilte yeah. fish. Good. Good, you got to. Yeah, it freaks out my wife. She. Is not a, a fan. Oh yeah, you got to have horseradish. Yeah. But we both we both grew up in in Jewish households. Um, you know, yeah, but we were. I was not a gefilte fish family. We we we. Uh, I don't know. It, it wasn't like something that I grew up eating. I do like it. I, it's you know I got nothing against gefilte fish. It's it's actually quite delicious. Yes. I don't yes. know about the jelly stuff that it comes. Oh, in. I yeah, like I, that I, too. You can make a I wonderful mean, soup out of that. No. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> You spread it on toast. Also, you spread the gelatin on the toast. Uh, I have done that. Yeah, of course. There's a have. name for it, isn't there? The jelly. Uh, it's just jelly. I don't. I don't know oh. what the name. Is. I don't know there what the name. what the Hebrew name is. I don't, or the Yiddish, <laughs> the Hebrew, the Yiddish I name. I Yiddish. But um. Yeah. But yeah, no, we were not a gefilte fish family. We uh, but we did like um, uh, I mean, you know. Matzo ball soup and stuff like oh, that. Yeah. Oh, of That's course. It. Oh, you know, you know what? There, um, we usually start our interview with a question that I completely forgot about. So I, I want to ask you this question. Um, and we, we always ask each of our guests, what is your stranded on a desert island drink? 
Drink. Yeah. Mm. Oh man. Uh, water. <laughs> okay. Other, okay. That's I fair. Mean, uh, now, if if if, no, if okay, so if, so if let's it, say there is tons of water. If it were alcohol? something alcoholic, what would it be? Yes, right. Beverage. So you're saying like there's plenty. Of, you know what? Yeah, it's desert island. I would I would love a pina colada. Mm. Like mm. if if I'm on a you know just an island. I I went to Hawaii recently, um, and uh, yeah, I mean that makes me think of of like something oh, yeah. tropical. So. Um, tiki, tiki, tiki. Yes. Yeah. And you're a food, and Wonderful. you know, you're a, you're a drinky and a foodie. Um, and I remember you coming into my bars when I was bartending in the city and ordering some some fine cocktails, and and yeah. and you like fine food as well. And you do you do cook. I remember living with you. You would cook steaks. That was like your thing. Oh yeah, mm. <laughs> yeah. I mean, especially during uh, you know, this whole COVID thing. Like I I cooked a lot. Yeah. I cooked a lot. Um, yeah. There's nothing else to do. No. <laughs> right. Uh, Really, but yeah, yeah I, I I've been cooking. No, I mean to be honest, I haven't really drank anything. Like the last time I had a drink was on New Year's, mm. and um, well, no, we had I a drink. Up. You and I, we've had a drink together when we do our Instagram lives. Uh, yes, you're right. That that's yes. So that was since since New Year's. I guess it was it. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, um, li- listeners, we've done some Instagram lives together. Uh where we mix cocktails and we'll probably, but I'm not that. sure if I actually put any vodka in those drinks. <laughs> you mean to tell me. Yeah. I might've lied that you might, that it was just water in that. Well, bottle I, don't, of vodka. I, just, I don't have, you know, I'm not sober by any means, but I, I just, I don't know. I just really, honestly, these, the last like couple of months, I just have had no time for any kind of drink. I swear. Like I just don't well, have time. Well, you have because to, because you have to focus, it's about, stay well, it's awake. It's about waking up. It's yeah. about waking up, you yeah. know, yeah. early mornings. Like I'm not, I'm not a morning person. So I've had to like train my body to wake up and to be a, a, awake and alive. And, um, ready, and now with these rehearsals. Go. Yeah. Oh, you're Yeah. Your rehearsals. So, so you're rehearsing for your play, which, um, yeah. it's called trouble in mind. Yes. Um, it's and- incredible. It's, it's, it's just an, an amazing play that was written in 1955 uh, by this woman, uh, a black playwright named uh, Alice Childress. And it, it has a really interesting story because she, so in, in 1955, it was done off Broadway in, in actually near where I live in the West Village. And uh, it got a lot of acclaim and producers wanted to move it to Broadway. Um, but they wanted her to change the ending and uh, make my character who's white, uh, they wanted to make him more likable. And she refused. And so they nixed it. And that was that. And then like, she would have been the first uh, black play, black female playwright on Broadway. And uh, I mean, she gave that up, which was very brave of her, you know, and, and she kind of uh, has, I, I mean, like her plays, you know, kind of lived in obs- obscurity from then on. And, and it's, it's really kind of a tragic story because this play is a, it should be a classic. It's really that good. Wow. And you know, soon after she turned down Broadway, uh, Lorraine Hansberry, uh, Hansberry uh, did Raisin in the Sun and became mm-hmm. the first black female playwright. So, but, but Alice Childress really paved the way for all of them. And, um, and it's sad that she didn't get her, you know, her, her, uh, her name in the spotlight, which she should have. And and you're co-starring with a Tony Award winner, LaChans. LaShans. LaShans. Yes. yes. And she's incredible. She's yes. just incredible. And she's, I mean, it's a play, but uh, LaShans is really known for her musicals because mm-hmm. she's, she's got just a sick voice. Um, but uh, she's really, she's a wonderful actor and, and the whole cast is incredible. And, you know, and it's Broadway and it's taken 60 some odd years to get to Broadway, which is, it's, it's, you, when you see it, you'll, you'll, you'll understand. It's really, it's, it's a really special play and it's actually very funny, um, but also really resonates. And, and it's, it's about a play, it's about this cast doing a Broadway play and the, the black uh, actors in the play are, um, so the, the play within the play is about a lynching in the South and mm. the black actors in the play are, are kind of lamenting the fact that they're relegated to stereotypes and there's no good parts for black actors. And I mean, it's just like nothing's changed. You know, it's it's it just it's it's crazy that this was written in 1955 and we're still dealing with the same kind of stuff. Yeah. 
And you play a character named Al Manners. Is that yes, right? I play this Hollywood director yes. who is making his Broadway debut directing this play. And um, he kind of prides himself on seeing everyone as equal. Um, but, kind of, you know, as the play progresses, it, it, it's kind of apparent that he's he's still got a ways to go. Hmm. Yeah. And it, uh, go ahead, Dad. No, I was just going to say it opens on November 18th, but you've got uh, a, but we start a preview, preview on October 29th. Oh, cool. Oh, yes. man. It's, Good yeah, we have. <laughs> that's coming. That's in two weeks, my <laughs> sorry, friend. Two weeks. Sorry, um, sorry to have to tell you that. Breaking news. Yeah, I know. So, this, <laughs> so um, yeah, the, the timing will be good because this uh, this episode will come out right around the, the, the time of the... Uh, Great. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, go to Roundabout uh, Theater uh, or Google Roundabout Theater and and you could go to their website and uh, buy tickets. And I, I promise you, you will not be sorry. It is it is a truly entertaining play. It's very funny. Um, and, and it also just resonates. And it's the kind of play that you'll leave, you know, thinking about for days. And how long, how long does it run for? Till I think January, I, th- I think it's like early January, but I, there's, there's extensions also. So yeah. hopefully we get extended. Yeah, that would be cool. I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to try to come, uh, yeah. for sure. And you've also, Definitely. you, you wrapped, uh, the new season four of Maisel, um, not yeah. too long ago, and that should be coming out, um, shortly in the next several months, probably in, yeah, early next year, early next year. Cool. Um, that's awesome. Well, y- um, we're, we're, we're just about to run out of time here. Um, but, uh, it, it is always a pleasure, my friend. Yes. Likewise. Um, you are, uh, uh, an inspiration to all. And, you know, we, uh, you and I, we both worked our way up and, and as my dad said, one of us made it. <laughs> Thanks dad. We both made it. We both um, made it. We're both doing, no, I mean, yeah. really, you know, you're, you I, are a supremely talented bartender. I mean, that's, you know, you really are. Your, your drinks have always been top notch and I'm, I'm not just saying that, like I, I, absolutely enjoy you know drinking your beverages so and, and he's a good actor while he tends bar yeah absolutely <laughs> there's a lot of it yeah there's a there's a lot of that performing and you there's know a, yeah there's, of course and yeah. improv and doing doing my beyond and beyond my tv segments and all of that stuff um well you can't, you can't be boring please no. t- please tell everybody on the set of the marvelous mrs Maisel that we love them okay t- 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 tony shaloub Yes, um, just, Rachel Bro- Brosnahan. She's fantastic. Yeah. She's so funny. Yeah, she's just text, so funny. just text Rachel right now and say, "John's dad, Jeff, says I love you." <laughs> I, I love her. She's she's fantastic. And I saw some great great interviews with the, with her yeah. alone and with the two of you with puppies. Oh with yeah, puppies. Yeah, the yeah. puppy yeah. interview. Tell, yes. her, tell her my dad will slide into her DMs later. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, do you know what really clinched my respect for you, Michael Zegan? Yes, it's the interview that I watched with someone who I've admired for many years and who unfortunately has departed this world, Larry, oh, Larry King. King. Yeah, unbelievable. Yeah, that was cool. Yeah. Yeah, that was really cool. Yeah. Yeah, I used to watch Larry and, King all the time on CNN. It was funny. He had never seen Maisel. So <laughs> they and they they told me that like right as I was walking, you know, to the set. They were right. like, "Oh, and by the way, he's never seen the show." Uh, <laughs> I was Good like, luck. "Oh, I, what uh, am I doing here?" Um but, but he he pulled it off. He was he was great. And it was it was a real thrill and and kind of a bucket list thing to do an interview with him. Yeah. Um, well, well, cool. Th- thank you so much, Michael Zegan. Uh, this has been yeah. great, and um, we'll we'll see each other soon. And we're we're gonna we're gonna do an Instagram live soon too. Um, okay, right around. Well, then we- yeah, exactly. Before mm-hmm. probably before this episode comes out, so that we can kind of drum up some interest. And okay. th- thanks so uh, much for spending time with us, Mike. We appreciate. it. Yes, of course. No problem. It's fun. Thank you. All right. We'll take care. That does it for today's show. To learn more about future guests, visit thecocktailguru.com or follow us on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. The Cocktail Guru podcast is produced by First Real Entertainment and distributed by Eats Drinks TV, a service of the Center for Culinary Culture, home of the Cocktail Collection, and is available via Anchor, Spotify, Apple, Google, and wherever fine podcasts can be heard.